I'm Erica Puskas. I'm a dairy farmer at Middlebush Farms in Somerset County, New Jersey. My name is Matthew Puskas. Uh, I'm the fourth generation here on our local farm. I grew up in central Pennsylvania on a dairy farm and my mom and dad both grew up on dairy farms too. So I come from a long line of dairy farmers. I was born into it. I uh, always liked it in school, you know, elementary school, uh, middle school, high school, enjoyed working at the farm. As a kid, we would talk about the farm a lot. Like when we would be eating dinner, we would just be talking about the farm all together. And so I guess I always felt like I wanted to be a dairy farmer. We milk 65 cows twice a day, farm about 1,100 acres, 1,000 acres, crops, corn, hay, soybeans. Uh, our milk goes uh, off farm to get processed. Uh, it goes for cheese and yogurt. We also raise all of their calves. So when they have a heifer calf, which is a girl calf, we keep her and raise her to become one of the milk cows. So the first two years, we're just raising them as, as young heifers. And then they have their first calf at two. They start their milking career, and then hopefully every year they have another calf. We have cows that are 12, 13 years old that are still, you know, making, making milk and going to have another calf to make milk in the future. Sometimes there's three or four generations of a family, like, in the barn where we can point out, oh, look, that's your granddaughter. Cows are named with the same initial as their mother's name, which is a three-part name. First is the name of the farm, Middlebush, and then her father. So their ear tags all have their father on them. So this is Middlebush Awesome Dee Dee. Dee Dee's really friendly and she loves to be petted. Dinky's kind of a, she can be a trickster. Cows are all different. They all have their different personalities. Some let you scratch them. Some don't want to be bothered. They just want to do their thing and leave them alone. They're just like, I'm here to work. Don't mess with me. Our cows get milked twice every day. They come in in the morning for milking and then in the evening, about 12 hours apart. For a cow, it's somewhere between eight and 10 gallons a day, basically. And every other day, a milk truck comes and takes a fat 1,000 gallons of liquid milk like you're used to in a grocery store. They take it to what's called a dairy processing plant and that's where it is pasteurized, so it's um, heated up to make sure that the germs are killed in it and homogenized, which means it breaks the fat pieces up so that it doesn't need to be shaken. Sometimes it goes to Pennsylvania and is what we would call fluid milk, so milk, grocery store milk. Usually it's staying local and going to Piscataway, the tropical plant in Piscataway, and becoming cheese and yogurt. But us as a dairy farmer, we're responsible for making a good product, so we want the milk and a cheese and ice cream, everything you eat to be good. You know, good, have a good taste, good flavor, last a long time. So we have to take care of the cow and the ground in order for the milk to be, be a good product. Every month we have someone called a milk tester who comes and measures, takes a sample of each cow's milk to see, um, it tests what's called her somatic cell count, which is how healthy her body is, and her fat and her protein and how much milk she gave. So it gives us good information about how the cow herself is doing. So this is called prepping the cow. We use our foaming dip to coat the teat and get it really clean. That kills any bad bacteria, like any dirt or manure that might be on a cow's teat. We attach a milking machine, it's a low vacuum, and what it does is it like massages the teat like a person's hand would do. So it has like a pulsation. So it like squeezes, so it's a rubber liner, it squeezes and it lets go and it causes the cow to let their milk down. It gets sucked up into a pipeline, goes through a filter, and then puts it into the milk tank. The milker comes off automatically, and then we dip the cow with an iodine with uh, protectant. It helps keep the cow's teats healthy until the next milking. When we're done milking, we go right into feeding the calves and the young stock. So I mix up milk for the calves, take it out and give it to them. And then I go in and feed my own kids and get them up and ready for school. There you go, come on, pal. After school, our son likes to push in the feed and help that way. Uh, our daughter loves calves, so she helps feed calves. She likes to teach them to walk on a halter, like she likes to train them. The farm kids kind of get a little bit of everything. They ride in the tractor when we're planting in the spring. It won't be too long before they're running the skid loader, and we're just, we're always so glad to have them with us.
when you're a farmer, the support around you is what helps make it easier. In New Jersey, there's only somewhere around 37 dairy farms left in the whole state. We're two hours from most of our equipment companies. So any supplies for our milking equipment, all that stuff comes from about two hours away. So we have to keep extra stuff on hand in case something breaks or if a cow steps on something and breaks it. Um, we have to keep all that extra stuff on hand. So you have to have a big inventory, like a lot of money worth of stuff. When you need somebody to help, when you need to go to a wedding or go on vacation, it's hard to find somebody who can help. Erica and I, my dad and my uncle, are the, the four people who do all the work here. So if we wanted to take a day off, if one of us, you know, Erica's sick or I'm sick and I don't feel good or my dad's sick, you have to, everyone has to know how to take care of everything. We depend a lot on the weather, which we can't control. So as weather patterns change, or if there's last summer we had a really bad drought, which was out of our control, that makes it hard to feed our cows because they eat a lot of what we grow. So we raise most of the stuff the cows eat. We know what they get fed. We have a nutritionist that comes out and checks all our feed, takes samples, and tells us what percentages of in different ingredients to feed the cows. A lot of it is the whole corn plant. So when you think of getting sweet corn, you have an ear of corn. But what we do is we grow the whole plant and then we chop the whole thing down and it gets uh, cut into little pieces, which makes it easy for their stomach to digest. There's hay in it, which is grass that we harvested and dried. And it makes a mix that they like to eat that's really palatable and enjoyable for them. And it helps them make a lot of milk. This is like a 50-50 mix of vitamins and minerals, and then we grind our own corn with it. So this helps feed them and keep them healthy so they could digest the cow's feed. And they always have feed here where they can eat, and there's water just behind them. And then the back part of the barn is sawdust and as they go poop and pee in it that gets rototilled in and mixed and it becomes a compost so like people compost vegetables we compost their manure in the barn and it's comfortable for them to lay on and it also creates fertilizer that we'll put on our fields later we use all of the stuff that a cow gives us really she is looking like she's going to calve any day yeah i saw that i want her to calve today Oh, now. She thinks, we're she thinks we have a calf with us. Probably. You're okay. They don't really moo. They're like, <laughs> They kind of make a, like a more guttural noise. And the little baby calves have like a, like a little baby voice compared to the cows. They're like, meh. Oh, that's not very good. They're more of like a meh, like a A, like a M-A, like meh, when, or for a baby calf talking to its mother. And then a bigger cow is more like a moo. Cows need a lot of time resting. We always say when they're resting is when they're making milk. A lot of the time you'll see them just kind of chewing. They'll just be like, they sort of look like they're half asleep and they're like, and they're chewing their cud. That's called chewing their cud. And that's when they're breaking their feed down into smaller pieces and that's when the nutrients can really be absorbed. They're really, really cool recyclers. Like they can eat chocolate that maybe gets expired. Other things like beer, when people make beer, the brewer's grains that's left over, we feed that to our cows. It's a very good source of protein. It enables them to basically turn what would be trash to us into amazing food like milk, cheese, and yogurt, ice cream. So it's really, it's really cool how they can recycle for us. Farms are very, very technologically advanced. Our tractor has GPS. You don't have to steer. There's farms where they milk cows with a robot. There's some big fans over the cows. They're on a thermostat, so when it gets to a certain degree, they turn on. We have an app on our phone, and it tells all the health information about a cow that we would have. So we would say that cow was born this day. She was vaccinated when she was born. She got X, Y, Z, whatever we give them. That's all of our phones all recorded. Track when they were bred, what bull they were bred to. It'll show the amount of milk that we sent out that day on the truck. 
all the testing that was done to it, what numbers, you know, like the fat percentage, the protein percentage. There's a lot of technology woven into the work we do because we're always trying to make good quality, clean milk and a lot of it, so we're always trying to make it a little bit easier and work smarter. Holstein cows are known for their high milk production. They're originally a breed from the Netherlands. We also have brown Swiss cows. They come from Switzerland, so they're like mountain cows. They're very hardy. They're known to have really like good quality, strong legs. But they make less milk that's higher in what you call components, so fat and protein. We also have jerseys. They're the little brown cows with like the big Disney princess eyes and they are very, like they have unique personalities. They're just like an energetic little troublemaker. <laughs> These cows give less milk than a Holstein, but they have more fat and protein in their milk, so they would be more worth more for like cheese or butter, um, ice cream production and things like that. At the grocery store, milk is somewhere in the $4 range, and that is a tremendous value when you consider how much work went into each gallon, so. Dairy farmers operate on a very, very, very thin margin. We've taken some of our milk and heated it up to pasteurize it ourselves, and then put it in a little container and made ice cream. Uh, we've made yogurt. We've made some cheese. We've made mozzarella cheese with some of our milk, like small batches. Uh, it tastes way better than stuff you get in a store. Yeah, but we drink a lot of the milk ourselves from our tank. Like we just open the valve and put it in a, a gallon container and put it in the fridge and lasts about a gallon a day in our house. It provides such a well-balanced and like really full nutritional package that when you have a glass of milk, it's almost like you're, you're eating too because you get all those nutrients. Calcium is the like showstopper. It's a fabulous source of calcium, but also it's a great source of protein. There's a lot of minerals and vitamins like niacin and vitamin B12. We care for our cows, our cows care for us, and we're making the best, you know, healthiest thing we can make with it. We have a great respect for the work they do, and it's a privilege to work with them, but also, it's a part of our business. So if we treat them poorly, they don't treat us well. They're all special to us, like we care for each one individually. We feed them as a whole, we milk them as a whole, but each cow has their own personality. Yeah, we work together, I don't say we work for them, they don't work for us, we kind of work together. There's a lot of different ways for people to be either in the industry or an advocate for the industry. We've had a lot of 4-H kids who just at, have gotten to work here and have an appreciation of where their food comes from and it's a really neat experience. They train her to walk on a halter and then we'll take them to a cow show. The benefit for us is that we get kids interested in farming and also that our animals get trained so they're really mellow and easy to work with and then the kids get to learn about the cows, they you know, get a lot of hard work experience. So it's a really great program for us. My first 4-H cow that I showed, her name was Dusty. So Dusty had five daughters. There was Dust Mop, Dust Pan, Dusty Two, T-O-O. -O. Uh, there was Dust Bunny, Dust Ruffle. Uh, we had Donut, we had uh, Ducky, Dot, Farming in general has a tendency to be very like, you know, farms passed down to farms, but if you're interested, there is a place for you. I really, really love being a dairy farmer. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of long days. You're gonna get dirty. It's gonna be smelly, but you can do it. People are capable of doing hard things. So if you wanna be a rocket scientist or a cow, a dairy farmer, you can do it. Dairy farmers work really, really hard to bring you a healthy, wholesome, nutritious product. It is at the forefront of our mind, and when, you know, when you're having a birthday party or off school for a holiday, we are working 24 hours a day. We're here seven days a week, 365 days a year, and it is to produce a product that will nourish you and your family and it's our privilege and honor to do it and we're just glad for you to hear our story and to understand what we do and and why we work so hard mm -hmm.